The E90 BMW 3 Series launched nearly 20 years ago back in 2004, replacing the much-loved E46 model. With it came a significant jump forward in technology, but also a clear evolution over earlier 3 Series generations. In 2006, the original 335i was launched, featuring the twin-turbocharged N54 engine, BMW's first mass-produced turbocharged engine. Although this variant had its issues, it largely went down as a great success, and even to this day is renowned for its tuning potential thanks to notably strong internals. In 2010, the 335i received some revisions, the main one being the switch to the N55 engine. Now with a single twin scroll turbocharger, it offered better reliability over the N54 and the same levels of performance. Many regard the N55 as also having one of the most glorious straight six exhaust notes. The E93 series is one of the truly timeless pieces of BMW design for me. It has real road presence with its squared off arches and angled bonnet lines, yet can somehow easily blend into the crowd when you want it to. The subtleties of the 335i in particular were one of the things that really drew me to this car. Is this the best looking generation of the 3 Series? I think it might be. I mean, obviously there's gonna be a lot of personal opinion involved with that, but I personally love just going back to these older generations of BMW and really just appreciating the design. We've seen how complicated the new BMW design is and it's quite divisive too. The E90 generation in particular is such a clean design. It's really quite understated. And as I say, the subtleties of the 335i model in particular are what really make this model stand out to me personally. I think the rear of the 335i is probably my favorite part of the car. It's a nice sort of squared off angle on the rear, but also these twin tailpipes are lovely. And they're real tailpipes as well. That's something that we just, we don't see as much now. Yeah, really light design, nice clean light design. We've got the subtle badging, no M badges. There's very few M badges on this car, despite it being sort of the equivalent of an M performance model uh, in today's markets. But yeah, I just think it looks really, really good. I very much like the clean design of the wheels on this E90 335i as well. They're an 18 inch alloy, but they're just a nice simple design. And also having silver wheels, I think really contrasts the black paintwork. That's again, something that we don't see as much these days. There's a lot of cars that come with darker wheels, sometimes black wheels. And yeah, sometimes they look good with certain exterior colors, but once they start chipping up a little bit, they really don't look that good. So this is a perfect design to me. I'm running a Michelin Pilot Sport 3 tire, which is actually an older tire. These came with the car, but so far they've been really good. We can talk a bit more about that when we get out on the road. So moving to the front end of the car, then we've got these two nice compact kidney grills. Again, something that we don't see as much now, but I think this really fits the overall design of the car very, very nicely. The headlights are that classic BMW design with a sort of two lights in each side. I really like the daytime running lights in these headlight units as well. They look fantastic when they're turned off. Overall though on the front end, I think you'll agree that it's not really too in your face or too overstated. In fact, it's very much understated. There are some angled lines on this bonnet which kind of give it a little bit of an aggressive look, but it's not too over the top. And of course there's no fake vents with this being a sort of 12, 13 year old BMW. So that's also a big plus. Now the interior of the E90 is definitely one of my favorite things about this generation of the 3 Series. The quality of the materials, first of all, feels fantastic. You get this really nice sort of high quality smell of leather when you sit in the car. And I love the feel of the seats as well. Everything just feels nice to the touch and it's been well thought out. I think ergonomically as well, this also needs a good mention because everything feels like it's in a very easy to access spot. So from the driver's seat, everything's nice and easy to access. And also because this is smaller being an older 3 Series, it's not too big and over the top. And of course, as well, with this being an older BMW, things are very much driver focused and you really notice that. Everything's kind of angled towards you. And as I say, easy to see and reach from the driver's seat, which is the number one priority. I think the interior is actually very spacious too. In the rear, you've got plenty of legroom, and overall it's a very comfortable place to sit over longer distances. I've done quite a bit of that in this car and no complaints at all. The seats are very supportive. And after a few hours behind the wheel, you feel absolutely fine. I think as well, another thing that often gets brought up about these older BMWs is the infotainment systems. And sometimes people are quite critical about the fact they date the car. 
that's not something that bothers me too much if i'm being completely honest and i do think the infotainment system on this e90 series obviously this is a later car is actually really really good the graphics look really good you've got full bluetooth connectivity the navigation works well I've got digital radio, all of those sorts of things. So I don't really have any complaints. It, it does everything that I would expect it, even a modern car to do, if I'm being completely honest. So yeah, that certainly works perfectly well for me. I think there are plenty of aftermarket options if you wanted to upgrade. I'm sure you can get the things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you wanted to do that as well. I think another point just worth mentioning, and I know that people go on about this all the time, physical buttons for the climate control it's just you cannot understate how important this is because you can be driving along and i can just feel where the buttons are and instantly access the controls i need to without having to dive into any screens it's just yeah it's so so good having that option i also just want to give a specific mention to the iDrive controller as well not only does this feel sort of nice and high quality to use but the buttons are actually sort of leveled off in different positions so just through touch you can actually feel which one's which so you don't actually have to look down just another thing where you can see that it's been thought out and really allowing the driver to keep your eyes on the road which is obviously very important the instrument cluster fantastic i think i've mentioned this before but it's just nice and clear and it tells you only the information you need and it doesn't go over the top with it the design as well is just very nice and clean. And I love the fact as well that on a 335i, the rev counter goes all the way up to 8,000. Again, it kind of just separates it a little bit from those other models lower down in the range. This car as well has the brushed aluminium trim, which I think actually offsets the black leather really, really nicely. And clearly it's held up very well over the past 12 or 13 years that this car's been on the road. So just jumping into the back seats then quickly to demonstrate really the space we've got back here. I'm about five foot 10. This driver's seat is in the correct position for me. And you can see here, there's plenty of room in the back. Also headroom's brilliant on this car, to be honest. And actually this back seat is really, really comfortable. It's not sort of rock hard. It's got a nice bit of cushioning in there. And again, this just feels like a really relaxing place to, to sort of sit. I can imagine sort of doing long distances in the back of here in complete comfort, to be honest. And there's plenty of room for four adults. So yeah, I think this does the job very, very nicely. Of course, this being the E90 four-door version, there's plenty of room in the boot here. You can see there's a lot of stuff in there right now, lots of camera gear, but yeah, there's so much space and the seats also fold down so you could fit much longer stuff in there if you wanted to as well. It just makes it such a practical daily driver, to be honest. So I think the real question, of course, that many of you will be wondering is, what is the 335i like on the road? Now, as you might know, this is a later version of the E90 335i. So it has the N55 B30 engine. So that's a three liter turbocharged inline six. It's got a single turbo. It's a twin scroll turbo, which means it spills up a little bit quicker. And together that makes 306 horsepower, about 5,800 RPM and it makes 295 foot-pounds of torque, I think from around about 1200 RPM right up to about 5000 RPM. So from that, you'll probably tell there's torque literally everywhere with this engine. Now it is possible to get these cars with a manual gearbox, but they're very rare, to be honest. I, I've only ever seen a handful come up for sale and I wasn't too bothered particularly in having a manual gearbox with this car, to be honest, because I actually think the automatic suits it quite well. It's quite a laid back daily driver. So actually this six speed ZF gearbox works pretty well. If you leave it in drive, it'll shift up the gears nice and quickly. And it's nice and comfortable around town. Put it into sport mode. The torque converter locks up earlier and the gear shifts are noticeably quicker. And also the ratios are pretty good. I've noticed on the motorway sitting at sort of 70 miles an hour, the revs are about two and a half thousand RPM, which is pretty nice. It means it's nice and quiet in the cabin. And you also get half decent fuel economy as well. I think it'll probably do about 35 miles to the gallon on the motorway, so it's not too bad. Obviously around town, it's quite a bit less than that. It's probably about 25 MPG, but to be honest with this sort of car, you can't be too bothered about MPG because that's really not what it's about. The real focal point is that engine. And yeah, it's a really fantastic unit actually. The 
suspension is actually a very good setup for daily driving. It's pretty soft, it's not overly sprung. The damping feels pretty decent and I'm going down a quite a bumpy B road at the minute and it's not very harsh in the cabin at all actually, which is very good and certainly we need that at the minute in the UK because the potholes are pretty bad. So I can certainly appreciate a slightly softer suspension setup. Obviously, you do lose some of the dynamics with that. Um, you know, if you were going to be driving this car a little bit harder, you would probably want to upgrade the suspension just to make it a little bit firmer. The brakes are really, really powerful though. You've got some big discs up front, and to be honest, it just feels like you barely need to touch the pedal and you're already losing a lot of speed. So I have a lot of faith in those brakes. I'm not really sure how well they would hold up if you're pushing harder. BMWs often have issues with brake cooling, so you'd probably want to upgrade the pads and probably the discs as well and add some braided lines in there if you're really going to be pushing on a bit harder. But as I say, that's really not what this car's about. It's just a very comfortable cruiser with ample performance. There's just torque everywhere, kicks down, great sound as well. We've got a really nice straight six engine note. As I say, I think many people would agree that N55 is one of the best sounding BMW straight six engines, to be honest. It's a really smooth sort of tone to it. And with this exhaust, it's, I'm amazed actually at how much sound there is with a stock exhaust. The left tip is valved, so that will close up on startup and then when the engine's warmed up, it will open up and you get a lot of extra sound with that actually. It's really nice. And there's some little pops and crackles in there every now and then as well. But again, it's just not over the top. It's just nice and refined, which I think is really what you'd want from a car like this. So if we just put the gearbox into sport mode now, it drops down a gear and then can use the paddles on the steering wheel. Yeah, it pulls out really nicely. You can probably hear that pretty nice induction sound as well. Of course, there's no fake noise in this interior. There's no fake noise. So that's all natural induction noise and it really sounds great. And the thing I love about it is you don't really hear too much of the exhaust noise day to day, but if you put down the windows, all of a sudden you've got really nice turbo noises, you've got exhaust noises. So again, you can just sort of have it really refined and comfortable if you want to, but if you want to just enjoy that engine note a bit more, roll down the windows and you certainly can do so. So I think the 0 to 60 time is around about 5.3 seconds. Perfectly adequate, top speed's limited to 155 miles an hour. It feels like more than enough power, to be honest, for daily use. Even then, it's difficult to extract the full performance because the car feels very, very fast, especially in gear. And I think that's another thing when it's paired up to the automatic transmission, it can sometimes mask the speed because you're not as involved in the driving experience. So you put your foot down, it's going through the gears, and before you know it, you're doing quite big speeds. So yeah, it's just the characteristic of the car, really. It is possible to improve the shift times of this ZF6 speed transmission as well. People use the XHP software, and you can basically change the ECU of the transmission uh, to alter the shift times and almost the shift logic as well. And from videos I've seen, that makes a huge difference to the behavior of the transmission. And really, you can get it pretty close to some of the modern ZF transmissions in terms of shift speed. It's very impressive. So we've got hydraulic steering on the E90. Definitely get a nice bit of feedback through it. It's a pretty heavy rack. I know a lot of people say that, but it genuinely is a big difference to some of the other cars I've driven. But you get used to it pretty quickly. The steering wheel's a nice size as well. It's not got the overly thick rim that we see on some of the newer stuff. It's pretty much the perfect size. And I like these sort of paddles as well on the steering wheel. They just make a really satisfying click. feels like the steering ratio is pretty good actually. It's not the quickest rack, but it's pretty nice for these twistier B roads. Let's see what it's got here. Yeah, it's really nice power. So 
So on the rear axle, we've got an ELSD. So basically that's an electronically controlled open differential, but it mimics the characteristics of a limited slip differential. It does that by braking. So it can apply a braking force to the wheel that's spinning up and essentially try to shift some of that torque across the axle. You know, as I've kind of mentioned, you'll see the theme with this car is it's much more geared towards daily driving. So for me, that differential makes total sense. If you were going to be pushing on a bit more with this car, then yes, you would probably want to upgrade to a mechanical limited slip differential or something like that. Something that can maybe handle the power a bit better and also just perform better if you were taking it out on track, for example. But there's a lot of other supporting modifications you would need to do with this car anyway if you did want to take it on track. One of those is an oil sump baffle. You might have heard some of these earlier N55 engines can have issues with lubrication, so they can be starved of oil through high G-turns. So it's just something to be wary of, really. I think, from what I understand, most of the time this is really an issue if you're running slick tires or very sticky sort of track tires and you're driving hard on track. Um, so yeah, if you were gonna be doing more with this car, there's certain modifications you wouldn't wanna make. But as a daily driver, it's just so comfortable. I love how relaxed it can be if you stick it into drive and it's just so quiet in this interior. At motorway speeds, there's very little road noise and it's so comfortable. The seats are really supportive, as I've said, and yeah, you can just do big distances without really feeling it. And I guess some people might be sort of comparing this to the E90 or E92 M3, and I think they are very, very different cars. The E90 M3, obviously with that four liter 65 V8 engine, its characteristics are just completely different. That's a high revving engine, quite a highly strong engine. I feel like that's almost like kind of a race car for the road in a sense. This is really at the opposite end of the spectrum. It's, it's fast, it's got the performance, but it's not like an M3, it's not hard edged. It's really just that understated fast daily driver. plenty of power <laughs> certainly no complaints over the power that this m55 gives out and because there's so much torque you really don't have to worry which gear you're in it's great the gearbox just matches it very very nicely so i guess one of the other points to touch on is whether you should go for the n54 335i or the n55 335i this seems to be a subject of much debate and you usually have people either in the n54 camp or the n55 camp both engines have their benefits i don't think one is necessarily outright better than the other the N54 is much more popular with people that want to tune their cars because the internals of those engines are pretty strong from factory. But there's reliability issues with those engines. The N54 is an older style, straight six. It's so naturally there's a few things with that engine um, that maybe did lead to less reliability. The N55 kind of tries to improve reliability of the N54, but it's not quite got the tuning potential that the N54 has because the internals aren't quite a strong factory so you would have to build the engine a lot more if you wanted to make crazy power which is obviously a thing that quite a few E90 335i owners like to do. So yeah to summarize I think it's really just preference. The N54 is a twin turbo unit as well it makes a very different sound interestingly to the N55 and for me sound is quite a big part of the experience so personally the N55 was just a go-to. The N54 cars though, here in the UK at least, are generally cheaper. They're obviously the older models. Um, so you know you might be able to save a little bit of money by going that route as well. So what do we think then? How do we conclude this review of the 335i? Well, I think these are fantastic cars. The E90 series in general is a brilliant platform. It's a really timeless piece of design. One of my favorite looking BMW 3 Series generations. It's really the 3 Series generation that I grew up with. I remember the E90 M3 coming out in sort of 2008, 2007. And yeah, just that 4 liter V8 engine was fantastic. And, and I think these E90 generation cars really do carry a lot of that character with them. There's a wide range of different options, of course, loads of different engines. The 330i, which is the next one down from this, came with the N52 B30. That is probably one of BMW's best straight six engines. I had that in my BMW Z4, the 86 coupe, and I really, really liked that engine. For a daily driver, especially if you were trying to get something that was maybe a little bit cheaper to run, that is probably a really good choice. The N55 is quite a jump up in performance, obviously adding the turbocharger. Again, the sound is really, really nice with this engine. So it's, yeah, it's very much preference in terms of what you want. 
I would certainly recommend to go out there and have a look at some of these 335i's. I know there's a lot of talk about reliability issues. And yes, that is absolutely the case. There are certainly some issues with this platform in general. You've got to remember as well that a lot of the technology in this car is getting on a bit now. So there's always a risk with buying these older BMWs and you can potentially run into issues. Another one that always comes up is the cooling systems. They seem to be a weak point. Radiators, expansion tanks, water pumps, things like that. I'll perhaps go into a bit more detail on the running costs of this in a separate video which will be talking more about what it's actually like to live with this car. But I think what I'm trying to say is there really are still some good examples out there if you, if you want to go looking. Sometimes they will require a higher budget and that's just one thing to bear in mind. It can be difficult to get the best cars on a tighter budget sometimes. With that being said, there certainly are some good examples out there. You have to look around a little bit. You want to be getting something that's been properly serviced. These cars need regular oil changes. You don't want to be doing 15, 20,000 miles on your oil. You really need to be doing sort of 5K mile oil changes, really maximum. But yeah, do your research, go out there, and you can certainly find some nice examples of the 335i. You can take your pick, N54 or N55. I'll leave you to decide which is the best for you. But I think these cars offer a really great driving experience and it's always nice to just be in something a little bit older I find sometimes and just kind of enjoy the way cars used to be, that much more simple driving experience. And I think there's also a lot of appreciation for some of these old 8090s as well. So anyway, I think that's going to conclude this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know. Maybe you're an E90 owner as well. Comment below if you are. Let me know what your experiences are with this car. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.